Hello, everybody, and welcome to Educational Podcasting Today. My name is Jeff Bradbury. This is the show that teaches you how to create an amazing educational podcast with a little help with some WordPress magic. We have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Today, we're going to be talking about an interview that we had with our friend Jason Tucker over at WP Blab. Recently, I was a guest on the WP Blab, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. And we're actually going to play for you the entire interview. It was a two hour-long podcast live show that we did, and I'm excited to share it with you today. But first, I want to get to a caller that called in. Uh, We had a Reverend Hughes that actually reached out to us over on our Google voicemail, which is teachercast.net slash voicemail. And I want to take a moment right now, and I'll play for you his voice message to us. Jeff, how are you doing? This is uh, Reverend Hughes. Listen, I'm uh, I'm sitting out here in uh, the Dallas, Texas area. Um, I happen to stumble across uh, your uh, your YouTube video and subscribe to it because uh, I think you might be able to help me out later on. But I'm having some major issues that I've had for, I guess, over a week or so now, and it's just driving me nuts because I'm getting ready to uh, produce a second podcast. Um, we just started a show, and I need to get a couple of pieces of information and really, really would appreciate a phone call back if I could just to kind of go over what my issue is. I think you can answer it. I'm just kind of new at this. Of course, I want to say thank you to Reverend Hughes for reaching out to us. And if you have a question, you can, of course, again, do so over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Or you can, of course, email me at feedback at teachercast.net. I had a chance to call Reverend Hughes back, and essentially he was trying to figure out how to get his information from his WordPress website into iTunes and had a chance to uh, talk with him over the phone. And and one of the things that he was doing is a, 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 a common mistake for many people who are new to podcasting, and they're trying to not spend a lot of money. You see, If you're in WordPress, there is a media library. Many of you guys know the media library is where you put all your your images. You can put some PDFs. And yes, you can put in audio and video files. And, you know, the first thing I said to him was it, it. It's something you can do, but it's something you shouldn't do. And it really comes down to two things. First thing, hosting. If you're on a very inexpensive, what we call a shared server, essentially that means that is that your host, and in his case it was HostGator, in my case it's Bluehost, um, you have a physical hard drive, a physical server at that location. And if you're on a shared server, that means that more than one person is occupying that hard drive space. And you don't want to be putting media up there, especially when it comes to podcasts and things that are downloaded. You know, those hosting accounts are set up for websites. Some of them are specially designed for WordPress. And we have things like managed WordPress and VPSs and stuff that we've talked about on other shows. But if you are going to get into podcasting, you need to find a dedicated place to host your audio files. A couple ones that I recommend is Lipson. I'm a Lipson customer. And uh, the other one I highly recommend is Blueberry which is really the word blueberry spelled without the vowels. Pretty cool stuff. Um, Why would I recommend them? Because they are the two world's largest repositories for audio files. Millions of users are using them. Blueberry plugs right into your WordPress website using the PowerPress plugin. And Lipson is a standalone website function. It's what I use and what I certainly recommend and the other options, if you want, are options like SoundCloud or, you know, there's a few other great ones out there. But, of course, the two biggies are Lipson and Blueberry. Um, those are companies and those are services designed to be able to download small amounts of audio or large amounts of audio. Now, I know um, every podcaster is setting things up for the first time. They don't want to spend a lot of money. I get it. But what you don't want to be doing is taxing your shared hosting server by downloading various uh, audio media. I don't even suggest putting PDFs inside of your WordPress. I suggest putting them into Dropbox or Google Drive or some other thing, um, You know, s- even SlideShare. SlideShare is a great spot to put media files. Let the media companies handle the media. Let your host handle the hosting job of hosting your website. So uh, I want to thank Reverend Hughes again for checking us out, for subscribing to us. And if you have a question... Check us out here on Educational Podcasting Today. Of course, all of our other blog posts are at educationalpodcasting.today and educationalpodcasting.tips.
All right, I want to move over very quickly here to our main segment, which is the podcast that we put together with our friend Jason Tucker from WP Blab. You see, Jason is a podcaster from way, way, way back. He has a very, very rich history of podcasting, and he does a live show every single Monday called WP Water Cooler. I have been following Jason, and I've been following this show for Oh, a long time. There are over 130 episodes or so. I think they actually might be coming up on almost 200 episodes. But uh, I've been following them since almost since the beginning. It is a fantastic show. He has WordPress experts with a capital E on that show. And I'm um, very, very fortunate I got a chance to meet Jason on Twitter. We started talking, and he's like, hey, why don't you come on the show? And I said, hey, I'd love to have you on my show. So um, Thursday nights, he does a show called WP Blab using the blab.im network. And we decided to do a full two-hour presentation. And you'll see the first hour, um, we did his show. And the second hour, we did my show. So if you're listening to the first hour, that's really him interviewing me. And the second hour is me switching over to interview him. But it's an amazing episode. Um, I go into a little bit about my history and and the history of TeacherCast and how this thing got started. But it's really interesting to listen to Jason talk about how the water cooling got started. We go into... Uh, some of the you know WordPress basics. We go into WordPress Advanced. It, it really, really is a great episode. And if I sound like a WP Water Cooler fanboy, I got to tell you, I was beaming during the episode because it's guys like Jason who I listen to their podcast every single day, and I look up to Jason because I got to tell you, the WP Water Cooler has certainly helped me out. And really, as I as I said to him, um, I don't know if it was on the show or off the show, but I did say to him, you know. It's it's podcasts like the WP Water Cooler that have inspired me to do something similar for educators. And it's stuff like the WP Water Cooler that really did inspire this educational podcast and a show to pop out. So um, I will be back on in about two hours or so. Um, but please uh, hope you can get through this whole episode. Check it out. This is my interview with Jason Tucker from WP Water Cooler and WP Blab. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and tonight we have pretty a pretty special, pretty interesting thing that we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to kind of split our show into half in a way. We're going to be uh, we're going to be hanging out and talking with uh, Jeffrey, and he runs a show called Teacher Cast, right? Yes. And so we're going to have him on, uh, kind of talking with us about stuff, and then we're going to be talking with him about stuff that he does. So it'll be interesting to kind of get a little bit of a collaboration thing going on here. And, you know, Bridget was scheduled to not be here today, but she ended up showing up anyhow, which is awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bridget. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. (laughs) You're a guest on your own show. How awesome is that? I love it. (laughs) Well, cool. Let's, let's, Let's go and get a quick little intro from you, Jeffrey, and tell us a little bit about you, about what you do, and all that fun stuff. And then, um... You know, we'll we'll have uh, we'll have Bridget uh, give hers and then mine, and we'll go from there. Sound good? You, you know, it's so tempting. You know, I what I want to say right now too, Jason. What do you want to say right now? Oh, you know, I do education. I teach education. I eat education. I wear. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep education. <laughs> teach teacher not class and all the things. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I am Jeff Bradbury. I am a teacher from uh, North Jersey. I'm currently the technology integration specialist in Westwood Regional School District, which means I am responsible for helping all the students, teachers, administrators, you name it, uh, learn how to integrate technology in their classrooms. So people call me the Google guy or the tech help or the something, but I I love being able to work with 3,000 people um, of all ages, K adult on there and really really help them out and go into classrooms and show them how to do things and google search and docs and 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 video you name it i absolutely this is my first year doing it and i i love this position i'm formerly an orchestra conductor or or a music teacher for the last 15 years prior to that in another life um a little bit more about me i am the father of the edu triplets uh they're 29 months old wonderful little babies that are sleeping right now and um yeah, five years ago, we started this website called TeacherCast and started to create podcasts and broadcasts and videos. And right now, you can find me on iTunes about nine or ten different places. I've got the TeacherCast show. We do a live show on Sundays called the Tech Educator Podcast. 
Um, I do a show called Ask the Tech Coach, where teachers actually write in and ask a question like, how do I set up a video camera? And we'll talk about that on a broadcast. And then we're also out to help teachers learn how to make great podcasts and WordPress websites. And we call that educational podcasting today. And you can find that at educationalpodcasting.today or educationalpodcasting.tips. And Jason, I'm going to ask you the question today, the, the question I ask all of my guests is, can you create a website and a podcast for free? And uh, we're going to see what the answer is tonight because everybody seems to have a different answer. But uh, can you do it for free? And then, of course, the other important question here is, should you do it for free? And I think we're going to have two completely different answers on that. But I'm, I'm really, really interested in hearing what your responses are. And remember, we're looking at this from an educator point of view when I do this. We're not looking at this from the um, the the professional word sure. camp vet, you know, we're not looking at it from that end. We, we don't yeah. talk about things, you know, uh, can you do this for free and be successful? Uh, that's the question I'm here to answer tonight. I personally think you can, um, especially if you're, if you're, um, if, if your church or if you're, why well, work at church, if your church, if your school, if your nonprofit, if you're any of that sort of thing, um, is on um, is using Google for their Google app stuff, you could definitely spin up a site, a site, and make that happen. That was with air quotes. Sorry, folks, uh, listening to this in the car. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, definitely. You could, you could do it using a site if you wanted to do that. Now, is it going to be the best website ever? Probably not. Is it going to be, is it going to be good for like getting the text out there and people can look at it and see it and do things with it? Absolutely. So yeah, if you're if you're just trying to get something out, you could totally do it for quote unquote free. I and and I'm looking forward to discussing that. I, I will start off by saying I'm a major fan of WP Water Cooler and have been for a while. And what I like doing is I like taking all the topics that you guys discuss and figure out how to do all of those wonderful things for free, and then I share it with educators. So awesome. um, I will tell you that water water cooler is the backbone and the reasoning behind educational podcasting today so thank you for wow all that. thank you thank for all the you. wonderful stuff on mondays awesome well thank you much bridget hey, what about you do you think that's you... bad either <laughs> thursday nights yeah exactly <laughs> bridget what about you do you think you could pull off something like that in 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 free yeah i mean even i could do it that's the whole allure of wordpress right it's bridgetable right. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag bridgetable <laughs> Folks, you know what that means, right? You got a drink. <laughs> it's a drinking game from, from a teetotaler. <laughs> so, um, no, but but yeah, if you don't consider your time, yep, it's the actual software is free, but you still are gonna have to pay for hosting, so it's not one hundred percent free. Now you could do WordPress.com, which I didn't talk about. I didn't even mention WordPress.com. You could totally do WordPress.com, spin up a site, and you're good to go. Um, but with but, yeah. you, but when you do that, you have to say, well, is it free? Because well, if you want to host media somewhere, where would you host media? And then you get into the conversations of, well, you can, you can, you can host your media in Google Drive, but do right. you want to? You know, um, and here's another, you know. And then you ask the questions, well, can you do it close to being free? Now, today, get to yesterday or today, um, without giving out names, a very popular social media life coach, guru, we're just going to call him MH, put out a newsletter, and he was touting Bluehost and why you need to get onto Bluehost. But he was touting the very base $2.95 hosting. Huh. Can you do that? Yes. And I'm sitting there reading that going, well, only if you want to have viruses and malware and, 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 and. Right. Well, and so yeah. it's, it's, it's the can you, but then there's the should you. Can you host your audio files on Google Drive? Yes, but you can't be downloading like 500 at a time on Google Drive. So you should host it over on Lipson for like five bucks or something like that. So... You just need the WordPress hosting. You need that definite WordPress hosting. Right. Um, that's, I mean, it's going to cost. And if you're doing podcasting, 
you really don't want the WordPress.com because you need the plugin. You need the plugins. And, so you, you can't know. do that. So it's not even an option, really. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, with and with educators, we we I share three different angles, right? I share WordPress.com, which is great, although it I think it takes you like way too long for a novice to get onto the platform. And then the other side is we have EduBlogs. EduBlogs.org is actually bigger than WordPress.com as far as education goes and educators go. Um, and in fact, there's a lot of things where I, you can see EduBlogs is leading, but then WordPress.com kind of has like a teacher feature somewhere and teacher things. And EduBlogs, hmm. I think, is running. It, it's like you see the 2.5 or 4.5. I forget the numbers. Million teacher blogs. Wow. Can you do stuff on edu blogs that you can't do on wordpress absolutely you can embed a heck of a lot more stuff on edu blogs than you can on a wordpress.com blog page wordpress.com huh. is very very limited on what you can actually embed when it comes yeah. to education stuff not just your mp3 and your youtube i mean i'm talking lots of educational things wordpress.com just will not allow you to embed on their sites which I'm sure there's a reason uh, for it. Well, it's like being in a gated community. You've got to protect everybody. Right. But an, an embed of, I don't want to say the names of things like that, but I mean, these are educational products that it's like <laughs> right. weird. Well, they don't support iframes. So that's, and the, that's the reason. That's, that's yeah. the reason. I well, mean, that's the thing is me, if you're hosting. Oh, oh sorry. Please, I mean, no, originally, I went to, I, originally, I was on WordPress.com several in several manifestations and I have a CD and I could not embed my music from SoundCloud because which is a podcasting medium too. So yeah. that's a, that's a real logistical problem, but still, I mean, if you're paying for like my site ground hosting is $150 a year, I'm like on the second plan or something. And I have two websites for that. So if you divide that by two and then divide it by 12, it's not super expensive. So it's all about, right. I mean, in the WordPress space, there's a lot that's given for free for the benefit of the whole. And that's, that's like the heart of a teacher. You know, the teachers are not paid well. Uh, I mean, when's the last time a teacher is going to say, why don't you Google it for a change? You know, they don't. <laughs> Stop asking me that question. What's the difference between dot com and dot org? You know, so um, I I would say that it. I would definitely not. I don't think that being on dot com is necessarily bad, mm -mm. but it's just very limiting. And so I think it's better to know that from the start because I had spent years blogging, and then when I went self hosted, I broke all my links, every mm -hmm. single one of them. <laughs> so, I mean, because it wasn't I mean, .wordpress.com. Right. That's so, a real downside. So when we're looking at using WordPress in an educational standpoint, you know, I find most people are looking at, I just want a blog just to get online. And, mm. but, but they, they want to, you know, I, I, I was it water, water cooler or something? You know, they said you guys use the term graduate graduate yeah. to work not yeah. so if you don't know what you're doing maybe self-hosted isn't for you and i and and here's how i have just come to talk about it we say the difference between dot com and dot org and we can go through all the things that first just came to your mind and i say no that's not the difference here's the difference between dot com and dot org on dot com you can get on you can create a blog you can go to sleep Dot org, you get on, you create a blog, you call tech support, you wait on hold, you talk to tech support, you wait on hold, up oh, something broke, we're going to call somebody on Twitter, and that's essentially dot org. Am I wrong <laughs> about that? I would and say no exaggeration. I to ask both of and, you guys questions. And so. Twitter is not the place for support. Most people have support on their website or at wordpress.org. Just saying. And, and, and I'll say that. Little shameless plug here. Bluehost is yeah. awesome. I, I, I like Bluehost. Every time I need them, they're, they call. I, uh, you know, I, I, yes, I am one of the guys that found Bluehost because it was the only thing at the time on, on the WordPress, uh, you know, who to call for hosting list. 
But I have been on one week last year when I was working on Teacher Cast. I was so screwed up with things. I literally figured out I was on tech support active with Bluehost for over 30 hours over the course of a full seven day week. <laughs> wow. Now, that's my fault. But I wouldn't yeah. have that problem if it was on WordPress.com. Be- obviously, I wouldn't be as adventurous and things wouldn't be broken. But, you know, if you just want to get on, and create content, dude. WordPress.com, EduBlogs. There's a lot of those great things. I mean, I'm I'm talking to a third grade teacher today, and she's like, "I want to do blogging with my kids." And I went huh. through all the different ways to blog. I went through Google Sites, making announcement pages. I went through Kid Blog, but that's now completely a paid thing. Although that was built, it is built on WordPress. I went through EduBlogs. I went through WordPress.com, and finally, I decided, well. Padlet. Padlet is a great blogging hmm. platform. Have you guys do you guys know what Padlet is? No. Padlet.com is essentially like a big cork board, but and and you know, you open up a board for the public or for your class and everybody can just put these little sticky notes on. And the sticky oh. notes have text or pictures or video or whatever you want. Like you can color code them. And essentially it's like having a big huge cork board for for brainstorming ideas. But then you can hit a button and it suddenly pops into this blog, which is in reverse chronological order. And you know what? For third graders, it's perfect. And you can customize the background. And by the way, it's free. And nobody has to have an account because when we're in education, we're always worried about students and sign-ons and and, and email addresses and things like that. So Padlet is perfect. And then I, I put that out to my friends on Voxer and they're just like, well, why don't the kids blog through Google Docs? Mm. Oh. Now, again, you're thinking of the word blog in a professional sense. I'm looking right. at it as I want structure. Right. I want and, and titles. Right. I want yeah. the date. And I want I, the text. I want text. I want categories. I want stru- and and everyone's like, dude, these are third graders. They want to talk about their hamster in their classroom. Right. Just let them do something. And so, why not open up? step back on this one why not open up google sites sorry not sites i'm going to rephrase that google slides every kid gets a google slide right you can put your content on there you can put some pictures on there you can put a video of the hermit crab and everybody gets a site and you're you know you're not third graders they're not writing essay blogs right right but they are writing more than some of some of your co-hosts i'll tell you that and so (laughs) because they're writing every day at least three sentences uh, right, but it's a blogging. It's a, it's an outlet for them to be creative, right? Like that's where that this is. So I sometimes often have to play the fence of, you know, are we blogging? Let's s- sign all these third graders up for WordPress. No, no, just just give them something and tell them to to draw a picture or to write or something. I mean, it's the it's the deal of, and I'm sure you get this too. What yeah. is a podcast and what isn't a podcast? Well, a podcast has to have an RSS feed and a and i three tags and all this. Like, no, in yes. My world, <laughs> in, in my world, I go like this to my class, and I'm making a podcast. Right? Uh, and we yeah. you know, educators, we just have different definitions. I always ask the question, you know, when you walk into the main office with a piece of paper and you want another one of those. What machine right. do you go to? And some people say, I go to the Xerox machine. <laughs> no, no, you don't. You go to the copy machine. So it, it's all back to what's the vernacular in your no, generation. It should, that's the wrong place. You don't get it from the machine. You get it from the supply. <laughs> Come on. You got to enter your codes. <laughs> oh, my so God. This is bringing this... me back. This is bringing me. I, was, I taught for one year. But this is bringing me back to student teaching. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I was a, I, I was a TA in classes, and it was that. usually the the computer classes where you know the kids sitting there and they're like, "How do I get further in Oregon Trail in those thirty minutes that I'm stuck in the show?" I'm like, "Well, for one thing, stop trying to type your name in there. Stop Just push A it. and push Enter and get going. You know, buy all the buy all the bullets you can." 
Wait, and buy all the food Oregon you can. Trail? Yeah, you just they say, did when I was when I when it was an Apple two GS for me. And so I was like, okay, so then get in there and then like get out there as fast as you can. And if the you know if if the wagon goes over, who cares? But you got to find the bears and you got to go kill as many bears as you can using all those bullets that you just spent. Like that was the thing that I would tell the kids in the room. I'm like, like just get get you know. It's like who cares what the per- the character right. looks like? Get Don't, past just- that. Just don't get dysentery, and you're gonna. You're, that was me. I always got dysentery. <laughs> oh man, I love that Padlet.com is great. So the bottom of the front page of Padlet.com says that they support Apple, they support, they support Android, and then they support BlackBerry World. And then below it, it says, "Just kidding." It's a great tool. <laughs> it really is, and. And, you know, again, you're looking at something where kids don't have to have a login and yeah. it's free. And it's fantastic. It really, and, and, and you can but, embed on it, right? So, so you can embed that onto your WordPress site. I'm, All right, Bridget, what do you I, got? I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble because, so how do you not have to have an account if you have to download it from the Apple store, Google store? No, Padlet, Padlet.com is a website, and if, if let's say, a teacher has an account, oh, they, okay, okay, they okay, can okay. create a Padlet wall. So they're and crowdsourcing. Make a Padlet wall right now, folks. Right. It's going to be awesome. And so now, now any kid in your class can go to the Padlet wall, and they can oh, type. They okay. can, you know, we call it back channeling or, or anything like that, right? You can, you know, and, and so... What we do is we play this game. Like, all right, I need to see a vertebrate that is in the air. And the kid has to know that, okay, I'm going to go find a picture of a bird or something like that, right? And so mm. it's who can get there the first and who can get there the fastest and all those different things, right? So it, it, it's, it's, I'm playing with Padlet right now on, on, a Me podcast, too. <laughs> on an audio podcast. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it's really, really neat little tool there. But ultimately, if you click over onto share, export, get help, uh, you, you of course, have the audio. But, but you can turn that into a blogging platform, right? Because the That's kids cool. can just sit there and do it. You can change the background, have your, your school mascot or your whatever. But, and then at the end, you can lock it down and embed it. So why not use this as a form of communication during our live show that at the end you lock it down and put this on your on your uh show notes blog post right that's cool and by the way google searches this oh sweet so one of one of my little podcasting pet peeves is when people have their show notes in a google doc yep. and then they embed the google doc on their show notes page and i'm thinking you're silly google's not searching two things to find one show but that's yeah, exactly problem. so yeah. yeah um you know again things like that can you podcast for free can you blog for free what's th- those are the things that we are here in quest to find over on TeacherCast. yeah no well i i i totally understand where you're coming from and what i like about about like what the wordpress community has tried to do for education with kids i don't know if you've seen this or not but being able to uh, your your mom or dad or whoever is at the word camp doing their thing, and the kid, you know, that kid gets to go to a word camp as well, and gets to interact with some some teacher that's at the front of the screen. You know, it's usually some web developer or something who knows how to interact with kids and says, "Hey, so let's go build a website real quick." And so they'll go on WordPress.com, build a website, show them how to make pages, posts. You got to remember, the kid is at home listening to mom and dad talk about building websites, using WordPress, all of this sort of thing. At some point, you know, the, the cobbler's kids should definitely have at least like sandals. They don't have to have like full blown shoes, but they should at least have sandals. And so that's where like the wordpress.com thing comes in. Cause it's like, Hey kid, now you can have a blog here, have at it. And then the kid gets to learn how to do it. And the kid gets to ask the, you know, the dad, Hey, so I really want to build a custom post type. No, I'm just kidding. The kid's not going to say this, but, could totally say something like that. And the, and then the dad or the mom's like, you know what? Totally. Let me show you how to do it. We're going to move your site from wordpress.com. We're going to make a, we're going to make a, you know, your own hosted site and we're going to go from there. And, and, and then that, the kid gets to at least learn how that works. And it's at that point that the mom and dad get a chance to sit down with the kid and say, Johnny, you've had your domain since before you were in the second trimester. <laughs> this is, is true. Right. Like, right. You know, 
three three <laughs> weeks gestation and they had edutriplets.com. I mean that we were blogging about this forever. So my, my little Jason, I know you have is, three is O's. <laughs> right. <laughs> little Jason has three O's in his name because the domain name wasn't ta- wasn't available. And so sure and, enough, little Jason with three O's has dot com and he's good to go. And that that's the running joke around here is, is you know, my kids have 400 <laughs> Twitter followers and my wife has like 200 Twitter followers. And and there was a time where I was allowing her to combine those numbers. But, but after the kids were born, I said, honey, you need to like your numbers are your numbers and the kids are more popular than you just allow them to have their own numbers. And you know what, kids, and this is what we talk a lot about, too, with seniors are graduating and they don't know what portfolios are seniors are graduating and they don't know how to promote themselves to share themselves i mean i i I talk to colleges a lot and for a kid to have a simple wordpress.com or anything website portfolio that's gonna be that one link for a college recruiter to open up and see their work or their google docs or their paintings music whatever all their youtube What's going to separate you from the fifty thousand other people that act, that uh, that that you know freshman advisor is going to be looking at to, to determine who's going to be attending their class? And it's so it's just inconceivable to me. In, in this in twenty sixteen, it is. It's yeah. inconceivable to me. I mean, there are little kids going to uh, what was it WordCamp Miami that had kids camp? Uh huh. They're building websites. They're doing it better than I am. I mean, throw those kids in front of desktop servers. They don't need an account. Yeah. They, they, they could build whatever they want in desktop server. Never even has to touch the internet if you're worried about privacy. Right. It, it could, it's seriously local. Yep. But, I mean, I would, I would definitely not um, – I would definitely not uh, think that a high school student in this day and age could – have a block i mean especially with the wordpress app on your phone or your ipad that works with self-hosted sites yep i mean if we're not doing that there's a major problem in the education system and they have advisors i mean do they not have computer class anymore even when i was teaching junior high in high school we we uh i taught them how to make a newsletter and publisher remember microsoft <laughs> publisher yeah and that, a little bit sorry but none of those files for, formats work anymore so well, the, i know i miss publisher <laughs> to, 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 pages is not the same i'm sorry i love apple but. to pull off what you just said you you asked the question don't schools have computer classes anymore yeah don't and, they and my my answer is a lot of them don't because wow. You know, and, and, but it, but the movement is this: you should be putting that stuff into your lessons, right? Like when you're teaching social studies, it should just be get out a Google Doc and run. Why would I yep. pay a teacher to teach you how to do a Google Doc, and then that's the end of the story? But then the hard part is we're expecting our teachers to teach the curriculum and the student and differentiate instruction and provide one-to-one instruction and be mobile. And oh, by the way, you're realizing that the kids don't know how to type because there's no we typing took, class. We took typing class right. on typewriters. Well, we don't Why do that anymore. Why can't they do that with Mavis Beacon? Because Beacon. typing class is actually involves <laughs> your thumbs, and that's the hard part here. And this you know, is, I'm, I'm our society is doomed. These I, people are going to vote. They can't type. <laughs> And that's why we have what we have. But that's, you know, I'm one of those people that believes I don't I don't want to see what's called a technology lab in the school. I want your technology lab to be in every classroom. Now, does that mean that every classroom needs to have 30 desktops or Macs or iPads or whatever? No. But right. I, you know, the the concept of your class will stand up, go down the hall, go to a room and sit and then learn technology. I mean, we're way past that at this point. Your technology is in your back pocket, no matter what it looks like. And, you know, there's just, there's so much. Do I believe that there should be a room with technology? Yes. And that's where we have things like STEM and steam and maker spaces and all those different things that are happening. Sure. Education, which are fantastic. And don't they have electives and ROC? 
uh, RLP anymore? They do. And every school is, of course, put together differently. You know, we, we had a movement recently where things like wood shop and metal shop were going away in favor oh, they of were. the Botech. But now you turn around and everybody wants STEM labs. Well, what's a STEM lab? In a high Same school, type of thing. a STEM lab has band saws and circular saws and, and, mm-hmm. and balsa wood all and 3D printers and, and, and. And it's a, so we're just in the, I mean, we're really at the beginning of looking at this whole digital world and this digital divide. It really is exciting. and But, but we're not yet, I see, finishing the circle. We know how to build. We know how to make. But a lot of the schools don't have the money for that final thing. I mean, it's one thing to um, I'll, I'll give it to I'll give it to you in music terms. We teach somebody how to sing. We teach somebody how to play. We teach somebody how to compose. But we're not going to pay the money to bring in the symphony orchestra to hear what that composition sounds like. And that's where we are with all of this other stuff. Is yes, yeah. we can design the car, but clearly we're not going to be building car but you know some schools have robotics clubs and i think that's fantastic outlet yep huh sorry my yeah. mind is Br- bridget long. bridget's like they I still eat lunch it. right there's still lunch and there's still recess right is that that's that's still there correct <laughs> yeah it's been a, i mean i know that i've been out of school for a while and out of teaching for a while uh wow almost 20 years uh so well, I'll give you. I'll give you some from my point of view as a parent. My daughter comes home and she says, "Hey, Dad, I have to do my homework." And I was like, "Okay." And she so she goes and sits down on the computer, and I'm like, "Are we watching YouTube videos or are we or are we doing homework?" And she goes, "No, watch, Dad." And so she logs into the uh, to, into her Google account, and she gets in there and she gets her, puts her username and password in there, which she can remember. She gets in there and she's like, "Okay, so file new, create a new Google Doc." Okay. Let's start typing. And then she just starts doing, she starts writing. She goes, oh, I'll worry about all the formatting later. I was like, good, keep going, start writing. Don't worry about what your character's gonna look like, kid. Just get out there and just start beating stuff up. So that's what I'm I'm like, get out there and start writing. And she's like, yes, yes. And so she's just, and she's typing away and she's learning how to type because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the fact that they're telling her, go home. Use whatever device you need, you have to get onto the internet and you know start writing. And she sits there and does her homework that way. So that's cool. I love that she's able to do that. Is she into coding and design? And is she interested or would be interested in, into making her own video games? Um. So she plays just like most kids. She plays the heck out of Minecraft. Um, we used to have a Minecraft server on site here, and we used to just have a blast playing it. To the point where I ended up paying about forty bucks a month for a, a virtually, you know, private server of just have all of our Minecraft stuff laying on there with all of her friends and stuff playing on it. So, yeah, she she totally is interested in like building stuff using a game, but I don't know about writing her own game just yet. So I'll I'll give you a little commercial, and and this is not <laughs> sponsored at all. This is just happens to be sitting on my desk here, but uh, I did a podcast with these guys a while ago. This is called Bloxels. Ooh, and oh, that's cool! There, I want that. There's a tactile part to this, and there's a digital part. The tactile part is you get this. I'm going to call it a game piece, and each uh-huh. of these squares is a little cube, and the different color squares mean like green is like land, and blue is water, red is fire, and essentially oh, cool. you're building a land tactilely here, or you can build a character tactile, like you can build your own Mario character. Uh-huh. Or and then you take your iPad and you 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 take a picture oh, of wow. it on your iPad and then you download the Bloxels app, which is free. And then by taking the picture of the tactile thing, that now becomes your character and your character is now going through the world that you created on here. And Oh, it's, that's cool. It's fantastic. Well, that beats the heck out of you sunk my battleship. <laughs> Why can't I be a kid now? And something again. This is not a. This is not a plug. Something like, like, 50, like fifty bucks. That is awesome. She, she uh, love it. That thing is so cool. So I, I'm pulling it up real quick here, so, so you guys Whoa, can see it. Whoa, we became little boxes. Yep. So check this out. If you hit play, you can watch it real, real fast and see kind of what's doing. Now people at home aren't going to be able to see this, so I'm going to kind of describe it real fast. 
So yeah, little kids pulling out the box. Totally what Jeff was saying here. And he's going to sit there and build out his little board, which how cool is that? Yep. Yeah. Cause he doesn't have any homework. So that's all that's in his backpack. <laughs> exactly. Oh, cool. oh, that is neat. I love it's that. It's way Flexbox Froggy, Jason. Yeah, this is cool. Okay, so so how much is this thing? Because I'm totally buying one. Um, <laughs> Was it like an Indiegogo <laughs> Kickstarter? Uh, uh, I'm going to say roughly 50 bucks. 50 bucks. But, but, 50 bucks. but give, give it a while. And, and, and let's keep DMing after the show because I think they're, they're coming out with another version. That's which, which, awesome. Which has a few extra things. We can talk about that offline. But but That's it's, cool. it's really, really neat on there because, again, awesome. it's, you know, like, do you need the tactile board for that? No. Yes. But for kids <laughs> to have that, no. you can do well, it. Bridget, you really do want it? No, here's the thing. It depends on how you learn. Oh, that's true. There are eight learning. There are eight types of intelligences, and one of them is tactile. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we've used um, uh, was it uh, Goldie Blocks? Have you guys ever looked at Goldie Blocks? It's pretty neat. Neat. Uh, Goldie Blocks. Let's see here. Yeah, so Goldie Blocks is neat because it's it's that it's that same stem type stuff where you're taking the strings and you're taking the little blocks that connect together and you're building something. And it's Lego in a way that you can just build it however you want. So there's no like, you know, something you got to really, uh, something that you have to, um, like a specific thing. You're not following instructions or anything like that. They don't even give you instructions. They just go, here's what the end result looks like. Now go build it. And so how fun is that? That is fun. So cool. So even taking these okay. types of things and then putting them, you know, to kind of swing it back into yeah, into web say. development type stuff, or even just what WordPress right. stuff itself. Like how 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 do you take these types of skills that you're using and and either putting it onto a site to show in the classroom, or putting it into the site so that way the kid can you know use this, or the person you know can use this and display it elsewhere. I guess very easily. And and, and yeah. here's, here I'll give you the blocks as an example, but this could be anything. As a website developer, and I'm assuming Jason, you've done a few websites. A few, have, yeah. Have you ever opened up the menu in WordPress and just decided to design the menu and the navigation system? Now, yep. if you were to do that on paper first. Or my suggestion to people is you get post-it notes and you do your mm -hmm. navigation on post-it notes. That's what Bloxels is to me. Let's put this okay. thing down. Let's do the tactile. Let's figure out where you want the lava and the water and how far does he have to jump. And then we're going to do it in the video yeah. game. And, nice. and I, I transfer that skill of, you know, and I... I do technology all the time without electronics. Sometimes the best tech lessons don't involve technology. I teach my kids well, at school coding yeah. by standing them on a carpet with squares in hmm. kindergarten. And so they huh. have to learn how to go up and down squares and the squares can be colored or numbered or however you, in whatever the rug is that the kindergarten teacher has. But we take those things you know the, the kids on one square and has to go to the next but we we do that so that way when we go to things like code.org or hour of code now they get the linear thinking and the fact that you have to go to step one step two step three be, to make it work then that goes into things like well i want to make a ham and cheese sandwich what's the first thing i have to do <laughs> well you put the ham on the bread well wait a minute where'd you get the bread from so you can't right. go to step three before you go to step two. And, and, and then you can play the game and back up and go, wait a minute, you're in class. You have to raise your hand to go home first. Oh, my goodness. And these are kindergarten kids. <laughs> but, right. but let's go back into the WordPress. What's yeah. easier for you? Sitting at a computer for the first time on a blank 2015 theme and building a website or sitting down with a piece of paper or a Google Doc or a Post-it notes galore and saying – how do I want to design this first? I, I, I work with our family, our local family center. Chicken here. and egg. Right. 
And, and our family center brought me in um, in November, December-ish, and they said, we want to design a website. We're brand new here. We're, we're here to help the community. And, and I noticed on the wall they have like an eight-by-four-foot whiteboard. We took out a bunch of Post-its. I said, here's your homework. And I got this off of water cooler, by the way. I said, <laughs> I want you guys to come up with everything that you need. You know, I basically taught them about scope. Yep. And I said, I want you to give me the menu. I want you to give me the project. I want you to show me everything on this board. I'm going to come back next week. And when they did that, now they were able to talk to me about their project and how we want things and why things go there. So, again, right. thank you, Steve. There's a lot of things <laughs> in there for this project that is only there because we're thinking about it in tactile paper or whatever. If I was just to sit down with them and say, all right, here's your website, here's WordPress.com, go for it, it I'd yeah. still be building it. So, well, yeah, because you're, you're spending more time learning the tool than you are getting the, the – you're, you're learning all about all the minutia of building, you know, using that tool than just like, okay, you just – there's that piece of paper. Start writing some stuff down or here's this whiteboard. Go out there and figure this out and then give me that information. And I'll show you how to do it or I'll build the part of it that you don't really need to worry about, the menu scheme or what have you, the theme to pick. And then – after that, you can get in there and start messing with it. Because people are so worried about like the design of the site when the the main part of the entire website is the content. Without yes. the content, it's like, why are you building a website if you don't even have a con- if you don't have your content figured out yet? Right. And I, I just put the link well, to the website well. that they built in there. Now I did my part. I I did Google for business. I put the SEO in. I did all the stuff that. Why would we even have this conversation? It's it's yep. a, it, right. Like I did my part, and they built it. Like I, I no problem nice. saying they built it. Now I showed them what categories were and how to put the picture up, how to put the caption underneath. I got them onto Google, and but but for all intents and purposes, I feel very very proud of the fact that they designed this themselves. And I that's think that's awesome. Really cool. That is really cool. And, you know, they don't need to know how to register for Google for business. Like, that's not that's not what they want. They want a place that's for their audience. Yep. And their audience is community people. So they didn't need to have flashy. And I mean, this is it's a, it's 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 a free theme. Mm-hmm. And it does what they needed to. And I'm so proud of this site because it works. That's awesome. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Let's see here. So, what else did we want to talk about tonight? We've we've kind of uh, we've done about a half an hour worth so far of um, just kind of we jumped all over the place, didn't we? <laughs> I think we did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't think about having little kids blogging. Right. Uh, especially because you might have a conflict because. Um, Really, they're wanting to teach the manual dexterity in the elementary. In the elementary years, it's more about, hmm. you know, I don't know, maybe it's changed. Mm-hmm. I, there might be some debate about whether or not they should learn cursive so they can read things we wrote in the dark ages. You know, you're, but, you're, you're um, never going to get over the should they learn cursive. Um, I remember even five years ago, that was one of my first teacher cast blog posts of what should we be teaching? And, and, and yes, you need to learn cursive for the answer is simple. You can't sign a check in print. What's a check? It's the thing that you give the guy who cuts your lawn. No, my, because, you, because you need a record of it. Or, or the thing you get when you work for a living. That's called direct um, deposit. Yeah. Well, yeah. you don't get. get See, that's the thing is like, is weeks. that some of these. Direct deposit doesn't work for the first two weeks. <laughs> Do you want your money or not? Like, this is reality. And the thing is, see, the, here's the thing. Yep. So yep. when I first started, like, uh, my boss is kind of like, why are you writing things down? And I'm like, okay, it's not because I'm old. There's something that happens in your brain when you're writing and you remember things differently. Then when you're typing, it's a different part of your brain. 
different parts of your brain are engaged and your memory is entirely different. But he's like, Bridget, so, I can't search that. So why are you, why are you putting that on, on this is. You need to search it if you remember it. And all of a sudden, a few months later, like I noticed Jason has this uh, notebook. I go, that's a nice notebook. He goes, yeah, I think you should write things down. Ah, uh, Jason, like, come on, like, dude. I like from, you know, from a neurological standpoint, you do remember things. You know, yeah. and I don't write it down verbatim. Like if I was on a conference call today with somebody we were interviewing, I was typing. Believe me, I was typing. I was like, I wish my speed was higher. When was I 72? I mean, I lost some of my speed, you know, but there's something that happens in your brain that's different, you know, and you were just saying you designed a site with post-it notes. Yeah. So you're never going to go away from how, if you don't understand how things work, it's just like, we we could give kids a calculator, then they don't need arithmetic. Why should you ever learn arithmetic if you use a calculator? Right. Because not because you need these fundamental skills. <sighs> you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I feel like my role is really good as the devil's advocate over here. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I'm for, I, but I think that they should be blogging online. I think that finding your voice, especially for the shyer crowd, finding your voice. I'm sorry, did you um, say shyer crowd? Is this? Are we suddenly doing Lord of the Rings talk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. It took me a few minutes. If you had said second breakfast, I would have been all over it. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. The more introverted, the more introverted, uh, less confident, maybe. Hmm. Writing is such a great tool to speak your voice. Well, that and blogging, you're you're not just writing for you and the teacher, but everybody in the classroom could essentially be reading your writing as well. Yeah, like the school newspaper or the yearbook. Do they still do yearbooks? They better, because that was my thing. <laughs> I find, yeah, that was fun. I did that senior year. So I was all about the yearbook. <laughs> Jen blogs for you says kids need to learn to write with pencils so they can use them on iPad Pros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, so, you know, yeah. going back to what you were talking about with <laughs> WordPress.com and yeah. embedding content into it. I'm looking on WordPress.com site, which you know they they've taken they've taken a lot of the technical pieces out of it. There's no place that says like, oh, here's how to embed media, other than just like this one add media page. There's no like O embed page that says because the term O embed doesn't mean anything to anybody who's on WordPress.com. Exactly. But, but so how do you find that? Like, where's the list of approved? Here's, here's companies the that you can tie in with you fail you, you try something and it doesn't work yeah one one of the things that we as educators love to do is we like to make these digital posters and one of the companies that does that is called s'more s-m-o-r-e dot com and essentially a s'more is a digital poster when i was teaching in the last couple of years i had my kids log on to s'more and they made digital concert posters but you find oh, a lot oh, of fun. administrators are using them for their weekly newsletters because you can put uh, videos and text and pictures and you can do it's like, it's like a poor man's infographic. Then the reason why I like it for education is you don't need to create an account. You can log in with your Facebook credentials. So, oh, that's well, cool. that. so all these different things. But you know what? You can't embed a s'more on a WordPress.com website. Uh, <laughs> Lot of superintendents calling me that are friends of mine they're like all right i have this website i have this s'more how do i make it work and i'm like dude you can't you got to switch over to edublogs like now oh, i'm telling, it, now I'm telling you the superintendent he's got to switch his entire blogging platform over if he wants to use this one little embeddable s'more thing because he just <sighs> paid the sixty dollar fee for the professional you know for the pro version yeah. Of s'more. yeah 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 I'm going uh why? I would See, leave s'more stinks. for Canva. I leave s'more for Canva. But, but they're different. That. They're different. Right. Canva because this is, is a graphic um, making program. This is like digital poster board. 
This is no, cool. They have posters. Yeah. I'm just saying they have posters and infographics yeah. now. I mean, they're they're constantly iterating, but I'm just wow. saying, like, this they're, thing's they're, neat. They're, they're just different. They're they're different use forms, but uh, but yeah. still. No, this thing's cool. I love this. They're See, fantastic. here's the thing: is that a lot of this stuff should totally be in WordPress.com, and you know the and especially just give them a, giving them a list and saying, look. Here's all these different sites that don't work in WordPress.com as an embed, but all of the all of these um, all of these different sites have have embed codes sitting there ready to go. So if it has an embed code, then that means that you can definitely do an O embed on the WordPress.com side and make it happen. Right. So as long as it's and, not it, and, as long and, as it's not a short code. You know, when when. Next time you right. talk to Matt, and we're looking at the the um, the refresh rate. You know, I think WordPress goes through what three, so, you know, three big refreshes a year. I yep. would love nothing more than for them to come out and say, "Look, we are not adding any features. We're not changing any code. But on September first, here's a hundred new o- o embeds. And between uh. now and September, here's a Google form. You tell us what you want to o embed. We're going to do the top one hundred things." That's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah, don't that care that, I don't care that my customizer can now do a fav icon. I <laughs> want to be able to put content on my website. Yeah. Easily. Man. I'm a teacher. I don't want to learn how to code. I want to learn how to communicate with my kids. And we're oh, there's an embed code I, sitting right here. Gosh. You can't, you okay. can't use it on .com. That stinks. Yeah. Oh, you I know. see. This is interactive. It's yeah. not just a flat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's totally good for kids and again for those Monday, you know, Tech Tuesday newsletters and crap like that, right? It's all it looks yeah. like Beaver Builder. Yeah, it totally acts just like it's, how Beaver Builder works. It literally is a page builder system. I mean, you 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 know, it, it shows like do you want text on the left and a picture on the right, and then yeah. you click it and it flips the thing over and it's I this mean, thing's it, even detecting if it's embedded or not and then making sure all the chrome on the site goes away. Gosh, man. I okay, I can see where your frustrations come from because it's like these things should just work. For like teachers. this should just work. Now, does that work on on .org? Of course it works on .org. But oh, yeah. again, I'm a third grade teacher <laughs> who just wants to create something for the kids or or better yet, I'm a th- I'm a third grade teacher, and my school district gave me this website and told me I have to use it, and I can't embed this on here. Now, oh, right, and this is why teachers throw their yeah. hands up, and, yeah. and I don't want to say these are the teachers that I work with because these are the <laughs> teachers that are all over the country, yeah, Man. all over the world. So I'm, you know, we're here to help integrate technology, but it's so hard when the technology doesn't integrate with each other. Mic drop. So yep. <laughs> exactly, man. And what's funny now is, you know, now we have it so that WordPress sites can be embedded into WordPress sites. Yeah. So now you can just go and like do an O embed from, you know, from Jason's site to Bridget's site. And boom, we're done. That's it. Right. And, and I'll tell you, uh, okay, let's. let's... Sasha, four point four or above. <laughs> right. Since, since you got me on a rant here, the one thing I haven't figured <laughs> out how to embed on a WordPress site is a Twitter hashtag stream in real time. Mm-hmm. I can, can in, use the widget. Not, I'm not saying widget. I'm saying on my live page, TeacherCast.tv. All I want to do is to put the Twitter. Buy a buy a hashtag. You used to have tweet fall or tweet something. It wasn't tweet deck. It was, but I yeah. want to embed a chattable hashtag stream without needing like an IRC chat or a chat plugin or whatever. Because I have it like right now. I have a chat plugin on from WPUMD Dev, and it's resource heavy. I love it, mm. but it's resource heavy. And yeah. my world in education works on. Twitter, like we've got Twitter, yep. so I want to do a live show and then have that. I mean, what we have here on Blab is nice, but no one's gonna see that stuff. That's not like yeah. we're not. Pr- Bridget, how it's, how are some of these ones that you're involved in do it? Because I I've seen uh, you involved know, in a bed, whole Yeah, I go Twitter chats are my life. I I miss them. I don't have that much time to be on them anymore. Um, what are some but, of the ones that you used to do? Because I, I can know start that researching. you can't. Well, buffer chats the best. Digiblog chat's another good one. Twub chat. Twubs, Twubs, 
TWBS and TweetChat.com are chatting platforms. I yeah. don't know if they can embed yeah. because I would never try that. I would not want that. I would not go to that. I would not go do that on your website. So you can. I would never, the- ever, ever go on your website for a Twitter chat. But I know that people have had Google Hangouts with an embedded and that's chat. That's what I'm looking for. I, I want to put that on. I, but- I'm sure you can't do that with the Twitter widget because I know that you can I do a, you have a lot of. No, I, I, I actually need on the I need embeddable on the page. And Twitter will make that for you, but I kid you right. not, it's got a twenty five second delay. If if that <laughs> it's got it's it's well that's pretty <clears throat> fast. I mean a lot of the chat platforms are slow. Yeah, but it's Twitter. That's, like it's probably Twitter's API. And and Twitter's the hard API part is, is a pain in the ass. You're Sorry. doing a show on Google <laughs> Hangouts, which automatically means you have a forty five second delay. Then your chat box is twenty five seconds after that. No, right. and then, and we haven't even talked about your server speed or anything like that because you're not on WP Engine. Yeah, and most of the stuff is and most of the stuff is using like jQuery or right. it's using uh you know AJAX or something I mean, like, like that to kind of pull the data. Maybe that's a good plugin for somebody to build. Even with my like for teach, teacher cast is on a is on a VPS with what did I just upgrade to four gigs of RAM four quads four cores the whole deal. I mean it's it's. I've got some, yeah. some beef behind the thing. And yep. even so, it's like 25 seconds to, to, to get the next hashtag. Like You can't chat that way. Yeah. No. Well, I'm looking at like well, to, uh, the I'm one saying that... I would not go to your website. I would never do that on your website. Either I'm on my phone or I'm on mm-hmm. tweetchat.com. Hmm. The serious yeah, chatters aren't going to do that. People yeah, but if, if you're help. doing this live, right, that's the thing, though, is that he wants to do something like this and have it embedded right. and then also have something on the side that's just supplemental to the, you know, to the discussion. So that way, right. you know, it's kind of like you're watching TV and you have your phone out and you're watching the tweets go by. It's like that kind of thing. Because nobody knows what's going on here. But, you know, when you're doing a full thing, I mean, I'm not throwing numbers around, but teacher cast has a lot of followers my co-hosts have a lot of followers so why not throw that into twitter while you're like you're promoting constantly as opposed to here's my website with my little irc and only these six people know that i'm here and oh by no the way, it should uh, be on twitter that. right it should be it, it, that, i mean twitter you're right with that part yeah you, it needs to be on twitter educators live i'm on not twitter, sure not that lab. needs to be on your website well the, yeah. that's where, but where's, where's the video like you, you embed the video on your website because that's you want the eyes to come to your website because your website has all the other hits. If you look at your yeah, website, well, you know what, we have the exact same problem here with with you know WP Blab is that I would totally sit here and promote the the WP Blab's website with a you know a link that goes to a post for this particular episode. But the problem is, is that I could embed this entire screen because this whole screen can be embedded pretty easily um, as an iframe and it'll, it'll, it'll embed just fine. But the problem is, is that the real estate is too wide for the, you know, for what we're trying to do here. Yep. And that's why, so, you know, I go from Wirecast out to YouTube Hangouts and yeah. you know, Wirecast makes it look all funky, but I embed everything into a Google playlist a youtube playlist so that way no matter what i'm doing i don't have to go into wordpress and re-embed a you know like okay every week we do blab it's a different it's a different iframe well if you have a if you have a playlist it's the same one Um, all you have to do is add the video each week to the playlist but right you know i'm just trying to find a way not to have 45 minutes of prep time (laughs) right like that's all i want (laughs) I Tell me about it. That's water cooler right there. That's about 45 so, minutes to an hour I mean, to just before the show starts. Logistically, if you do have the video and you do have the hashtag search for the archive, that's not going to be in real time anymore. I mean, it's not going to be in the past. Yeah. That's, that's the true. hashtag is going to keep refreshing with well, the API. Yeah. 
Well, like, right? what the, is that what like an what? API is? Like, you're asking them for information, yep. they get it down to you. So, if you have yeah. a video and then you have a chat on the side, this video stays the same in time. This is recorded. Mm-hmm. This is not recorded. Sure this will keep right. going on. So well, it's so not going to make any sense a week from now or a year from now because yeah. the hashtag tweets will be from maybe the next episode or maybe the next episode but, or whatever. Yeah, but I, Bridget, we were we were thinking about this too. I'm, yeah. Sorry. See, I was trying to do this too with with um, water cooler when we first started. Is I is I named it water cooler zero zero one. That was the hashtag. Everybody use you know WP water cooler zero zero one. That was the hashtag to use, right? So yeah. I wanted to capture all that stuff, and I had it all set up to do it. It was capturing all the tweets, and it was going to make it so it would play in real time. And I had all this oh, stuff built out to do it. For that episode. For that episode. Oh and the God. problem was is no one's so going to remember work. which number it is. Right. They're not. Make it too hard, then they're not going to so, participate at all. So kind of our happy medium here is what we do with this particular show is that We'll use at the end of this. There's a there's a plugin that goes and grabs all of the um, all of the stuff within the chat and converts it into uh, comments. So the comments will have like 900 comments for this post on the site. Unfortunately, that looks like comments. So people look at it and they're like, "Oh, I can I can do a threaded discussion. I'll go and." You know, I'll go and reply to this person, and that person never actually went to the website and posted, you know, a comment. They just did it here. So, yeah, I'm getting the links, the link love and stuff from like, you know, all these different posts that are in, you know, all these different things that we put in the comments. But that it's not. It's, it's not set right. up to be part of the live show. It kind of is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have a good suggestion but for now you. Now my friend's gonna be looking for the teacher cast guy. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. For the teacher cast guy. It worked. <laughs> Your PHP API plugin developer people. Exactly. Like put put your WordPress prayers out. Oh man, that's great. Oh. Oh uh, yeah, the tlk.io. Um, I remember. I remember that one. But I don't think that worked with Twitter. I don't remember how that worked. It was probably very IRC-like type setup. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, like Jeffrey. Our, we all, we're like, oh, yeah, the show's live. We're all looking for plugins. <laughs> okay. like, Excuse us while we go to WordPress.org. Yep. Oh man. So Jason, tell me a little bit about WP Water Cooler. How did it start? How did it work? How did you get your guests? Did you guys know everybody before it started? What was the yeah. where did the idea come from? Yeah, so the the idea was that um I've been doing podcasts for quite a few years and um I really wanted to do another podcast and I wanted to do one that had all my friends involved because at the time I just had uh, my previous podcast. It was just myself and one co-host and we would do a double endure podcast. So he would re- he would record locally on his end. I'd record locally on my end. He would send me the MP3 file and we'd smash them together. And that's a double ender. So we would do that. And um, that worked and everything, but it was just, it, it just wasn't right. And I knew that there were going to be new technologies out there to do this. And Google Hangout just started, started up and they just started to do the Google Hangout on air. And I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. And so I started talking with my wife and we were like, what's a good name for a show? And, and, you know, she was my co-host on one of the shows that I did um, uh, back in the day. And so I was like, well, what's a good, you know, what's a good name for the show? And so we started kind of batting around a couple ideas and I was like, well, it's kind of like, you know, at the time I was working from home and I didn't have that water cooler type thing where you just like go get a drink at the water cooler or the soda machine or oh, the, whatever it is. Game. I didn't have that. So I was like, this sucks. I really want to have that water cooler moment. And so we started talking about it and sure enough, WP water cooler, that was the word we were going to do, you know, WP easy. You can use WP in your domain name and not get sued <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, water cooler. Perfect. It was available and I grabbed it and we, we went with it. 
so that's kind of how it started. Um, as for like the, you know, all the people that were on the show, um, I started asking people in my community. I just started asking the, the local WordPress folks. Um, I asked Chris Lima um, early on. I said, you know, I want to do this thing. Are you interested? He said, yeah, let's do it. And then I asked Steve Zangit. I'm like, hey, do you want to do this thing? Yeah, let's do it. And so we just we just all started slowly but surely building out the, the essentially the core cast. And, you know, the, the way that Chris has explained it to folks, which is pretty is a lot better than the way I explained it is that we wanted we wanted like we wanted a cast like we wanted the villain we wanted the talkative <laughs> one we wanted the happy one we wanted the business what one happy i don't know but we wanted these types of things so we we for the Don't most part dropped. turned that show into like a wordpress version of seinfeld <laughs> a show about nothing that that uh, that explains it that, that makes yep. complete sense now actually <laughs> And so when people ask me, like, man, I can't stand that guy, Steve. He's so annoying. Or, man, this guy to never Wikipedia. talks. Or, oh, my gosh, why does this person always do this? It's like, you know, these people all have their place. You didn't – not everyone liked Kramer. Not everyone liked, you know, this person, that person. They didn't, not didn't everyone like liked everybody. I'm not friends with them anymore. And, and I, I'm sure you've heard this before, but – for people who are listening to it for the first time, I've heard, I've been like, I've, I, I sometimes listen to it when people are driving with me and they say, how do you follow this thing? Because <laughs> everyone's screaming over each other. But I noticed that after a while you, you actually can, is it compartmentalize or you, you can break apart the different tonalities of other voices and you can focus on right. Steve yep. while Takes about somebody 10 else episodes. is screaming over top of him. It's, yeah. So the, you know, it's tough. You have a show that's a, a show about nothing, about about WordPress, but about nothing for the most part. We have this rough idea of what we're going to be talking about. Um, for most people at home that don't know, we actually have a rule during the pre-show, and the pre-show is, is the the rule during the pre-show is you're not allowed to talk about the show before the show. So we have zero prep. Like we, everyone asks, what's, what's the topic for today? You know, if they just like joined in blindly and had no idea, here's the topic for today. Oh, okay. And then that's it. We don't talk about the topic after that until the, we hit record and then we start talking about it. So that way it's fresh. We're not like all of us, you know, the core group know one another and know one another pretty well. So we can get at each other pretty easily. And so it's it's more about just making sure that we we get all those people that are not part of the show normally to kind of understand what the rules are and how to get there and that there is going to be a beginning middle and end of that show now you 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 and i we talked about we talked about this in our pre-show but i noticed that you and i have similar philosophies when it comes to hosting a show yeah which is it's not about you. I will actually listen to a whole water cooler and realize that Jason might not have said more than two sentences. And I have the same philosophy. I call this the Larry King philosophy, which is they didn't come to listen to Larry King. Yep. They came to the show because Tom Cruise is on yep. or because the president's on. But Larry's just happens to be the guy pushing the buttons or you know wearing the suspenders. Yeah. He's, on, <laughs> he's on every show, but you're not, you know, and it's one of the things I, I'm I'm still struggling for. Yeah. I I like you know this is actually the most I've ever talked on a podcast <laughs> in a long time. Well, I let you have at it because I've listened to yours before, so I was like, you know, how right. about it? <laughs> but I I noticed that about you. It's yeah. it's you let first of all I I completely understand. It's hard for you to get a word in edgewise, and that's cool. Um, I find a lot of shows that I'm doing, I have to okay. Right. Okay, Jason, and how do you feel? Okay, and Dave, how do you feel? And yep. how do, and and I I like the fact that on the shows, it is a free for all, and you're just sitting back on. All right, thirty minutes, we're done. Well, how I do, do you, have. I, just, there is, is, there is a bit of a is trick. That... There's a bit of a trick to it, though. So, when you're the one that never says anything, but you're the one that says every says says something at the beginning of the show, every single show, people listen to you when you do talk. That means that they have, to, up, have to, they actually have to hear you to be able to shut up for a second. Whoa, wait a second. <laughs> a strange occurrence is happening here. 
Jason is saying something. We need to shut up for a second. Hopefully he doesn't mess this up. Like that's, that's pretty much what it is. Right. So, and you know, mind you, I'm at work and it's during my lunch hour. So it's like, I want to make sure that this thing's getting done right. And we do a one-time deal. That's it. There, there's no edits to the show. We don't edit a thing. I don't add bumpers to the beginning. I don't do anything at the end. I don't edit ums, ahs, none of that stuff. It's whatever that MP3 file is that YouTube spits out. That's what I'm going to put up as a podcast. So yeah, it's it's tough. And you, if you're, as long as everyone understands that you're the one that doesn't talk a lot, but when you say something, hopefully it's going to be profound enough to warrant everyone shut up for a minute the red lights on Jason to say something then. And that's what usually happens. And I love it because it's like, you know, everyone's talking. I'm like, actually multi-site sucks. You shouldn't use it. And everybody's like, oh, what? You know, and they'll, they'll let me say it, you know, they'll let me say the, the thing I got to say. <laughs> they'll let me say I, it. I, my, my favorite is when everybody shuts up and someone goes, never buy from theme forest. And then everybody keeps going on. <laughs> This is true. Yeah. Don't bite them from theme forest. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. Jen, Jen in the chat had, has a good, a good, uh, a good thing there. So she's talking about, um, I have the ability to do whatever I want on the show. If I want to mute everybody, no problem. Boop, 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 boop. Mute everybody and they're done. And I have done that. I've also threatened if somebody's talking too loud, I'm going to turn the volume down on those people. And I do. I go, well, I hate to say this female person that's always on the show all the time. I'm grabbing the volume control and I'm dropping you down 30%. <laughs> and then Say says, oh, you suck. <laughs> when, so those when, things. When you have that ensemble cast yeah. and then you bring in somebody, and it, this might be a, a WordPress rock star. I'm the guy who runs the Jetpack plugin. I'm the guy who makes wp engine i'm syed right like, yep, yep. how do you bring that person turn him into a personality if you will and then say all right you're going up against the the, the chris's and the steves and the yeah. and, right like, how do you how do you handle that yeah so it, i i lean heavily on my cast so i tell them i go look uh, we need, you know, that one ringer. We need that one person that really knows something about whatever it is. Syed Balki is perfect example of that. I don't know Syed. Syed's not like, he's not in my inner circle of friends, but he's definitely, you know, one person separated. I go call up Chris and say, hey, Chris, Lena, can you get Syed Balki on? We're going to be talking about this thing. Let's see if we can make it happen. He's like, yeah, sure. No problem. Guy's available. He gets on the show. And now Chris is the one that can bring Syed in and he can actually talk about whatever it is he wants to talk about. So I don't really have to worry about any of that because the person that brought him in is usually the one that's like, I, I vouch for this guy. He's not going to screw it up. He knows what the rules of the show are. Let's make it happen. And then they just come in and they're typically pretty, you know, they're, they're pretty good about it. Like we had the VP of hosting from GoDaddy on the show. We're like, look, you know, not all of us like GoDaddy. Really, I mean, this is this is what we told them at the beginning. Not all of us like GoDaddy. We've talked bad things about GoDaddy in the past. I'm so sorry to hear it. You know, I'm sorry to let you know. And he's like, no, it's cool. I want to be on the show. I want to defend our product. Let's make it happen. And we did, and we had great conversation about it. So it's those things where it's like, I, you know, I, I love it. You know, we had Matt on the show, and we're like, hey, you know, it was last minute. Steve's like, I think Mullenweg is going to make it on the show. Let's see. I was like, okay, let's see. And sure enough, he was available. He hops on the show last, like last minute. I hit record. And then Matt shows up. I'm like, whoa, all right, sweet. He did show up. How's it going, Matt? And then it turned into the Matt show, which was awesome. It's exactly what we wanted. So it's those things where it's just kind of, it's a lot of like happenstance, a lot of just like, kind of just like, Throw it out there and let things happen. And and the one thing I love about doing podcasting is you realize that these are just people. You know, mm -hmm. everybody has what? This, they this, are. This, these are all people that have jobs. You know, I I I had an opportunity to have Syed on uh, with like a one to one, and it was fantastic. Yep. And I and and you you quickly have to get past the point of this kid's like 
21, he's like a gazillionaire because he's got all these different businesses. And no, this is just a guy that really wants to make a difference in the world. And so am I. And yep. so is the next person. And the person listening to this wants to learn how to make a difference in the lives of all their kids. And, yep. and I just love the fact that podcasting puts you on this equal playing field of, oh, maybe that guy's nervous to talk to me because this is his first podcast. And you, you get all these different things. Yeah. I, it's amazing. It really, really is. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure you get people at word camps that say, Hey, I'm a fan, right? Like, how do you ha- like that? That's weird. That somebody- it's weird. weird. It's weird because what happens is usually they'll hear my voice and especially if they're the person that's in the car. So I I've had this happen. I don't know if you know who um, Adam Christensen is, but he does a show called Matt cast. Probably one of the second or th- maybe his first or second, you know, longest running podcast about Max. And he was at WordCamp San Diego. And we're sitting there talking, chatting back and forth. And this person walks by and I could see him walk past behind Adam. And I was like, you know, you could hear him kind of go like, or see him go, hmm, what was that? And then he walks away from it and he comes and he goes, wait, wait, wait. Are you Adam Christensen? He's like, why, yes, I am. They're like, oh my gosh, I heard your voice and I could totally, because Adam only does audio. He doesn't do a video podcast. So, but people see me and they're just like, Jason, hey, I love your show. And I'm like, thanks. And it's it's so weird to see that and hear that. I know. And you don't even act like a diva either. Right. I Most of the time I'm busy. And really it's like, <laughs> I spend a lot of time at work, like hiding from my, my, my coworkers because I'm trying to get oh work done. And they're trying to, bu- oh they're trying to bug me to actually do work for them. And there's only one Jason in the whole room, the whole building. And that, that I only have so much I can do. <laughs> You know, I, I love when people come up and they say, I listen to your show. I always ask them why. And I love it when people come up and, and more importantly, they're like, How's your family? You're How's... such a teacher. Right. See, I say Only sorry. A teacher would ask I that. apologize. That's what I did to you when you said, Oh, I listened to the car. I go, Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't, it, it's taken me a while, but you know, you get strangers that come up to you and they say, How is your baby? Because they know that wow. one of my triplets still lives in the hospital. And uh, hasn't been home yet. That's another long story. Mm. But they're like, how's Christopher doing? I've been following you. I've been following the stories. Or one of my, you know, I've got people that are like, I was there at the convention when you had to run out. How wow. are things? And you realize that this complete stranger you owe a big hug to. Yeah. Because, you know, when I had to run out, I left, you saw my booth. I left like $15,000 worth of stuff at the Atlantic City <laughs> Teachers Convention. Jeez. I split and I had literally, I don't know. I don't know who these people were. I had strangers packing up all my podcasting gear, putting it in my car and a friend drove it to the hospital the next wow. day because I had to go be wow. daddy. Literally. That's, so that's awesome. It's, it's awesome when people come up and they're like, look, you helped this. You did that. And, you know, clearly with the show, like water cool, you're hitting so many people, so many topics, so many different things. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's a neat part podcasting thing. I mean, where, where do you see water cooler or where do you see yourself as a podcaster over the next little bit? I mean, do you yeah. see water cooler being episode 300 and it's the same half an hour with a bunch yeah. of, you know, yeah, characters? I totally, I totally see that. And, but what I also see is that, we need to branch out a little bit. And we've already started to do that by starting WP Blab. Um, we started um, we started doing a, a couple different couple different little shows that we've you know kind of worked out to see hmm would this work and hmm I wonder if that would work and so yeah I have a couple little things you know under my hat that I'm I'm slowly but surely kind of you know launching out there to see you know we did one called WP Show and Tell I say we in the in the royal sense here. Um, right. and, <laughs> but that's the thing here and and again i'm i'm in the same boat i yeah one teacher cast for me is a third person so i always say we when i say the <laughs> website they're like well who's this other i'm like no it's, <laughs> it's i don't want to i don't ever want to say i do the work that's right you don't do that right yeah and when i say we have created other shows what i'm really saying is now jeff's making seven <laughs> podcasts <laughs> And it's yeah, <laughs> WP water cooler and WP, but it's, it really yep. is. I'm not going to say it the wrong way here. I hope but it's the Jason show with all these different things, right? Like right. nobody else is, you know, say is not going to do WP 
No. Whatever. Right? No. Like this is this is your brand. Yeah. So at what point can we, you, I, we, create a an opportunity for somebody to come in and do WP something else? Something, yeah. But it's under your umbrella, but you don't have to do all the work. I mean, this is kind of where where right. I'm looking at things. Like, there's only yeah. so many hours in a day to do seven shows in a week. <laughs> So Leo how do you do this? Does that. Leo Laporte does that with This Week in Tech Twit. And he's in a million network. dollar studio. Yeah. Well, now he is, but it didn't start that way. He was on KFI. <laughs> yeah. He was just and, at a local AM but, station. You know, Leo that's also a, had a video editor and a camera guy and a director. And, I know, uh, but not originally. I'm saying not originally. Well, yeah. yeah. Now he does, but he has Kevin Rose and all these other people doing their own shows under that umbrella now. Yeah, but didn't no. start that so, way. He started yeah. at KFI. Yeah, for me, for me, it's it's trying to it's trying to find, you know, you gotta get people used to doing this stuff. They need to be familiar with how this technology works. And you know, I had Bridget do this show by herself a couple weeks back, and the entire I kid you not, under the bus. no, I kid you not, the entire all the technology it, failed it her. Just failed. It was so humiliating. Like everything, we and that's the thing that you know. Well, is that we promote the heck out of this one URL, which is the ones on the top of the screen here that we're looking at right now, and we promote the heck out of that thing. And then what ends up happening, the thing falls on its face, and she's not to blame. The technology is the one that fell there. It could have been her microphone could have went out or whatever. But and that's why we embed it onto our website and we come up with something like TeacherCast.tv. <laughs> right, exactly. But you know, water cooler started. I'm looking on YouTube because I don't remember now. October fourth, two thousand twelve was the first posting that we did there, and you know that it was like we got ten views on our first show, and I'm like, yay, this is awesome. And then the second one, twenty views of the show, yay, this is awesome. And I was like, wow, this is you know, we started getting enough to where I was actually able to join a, a network, a, you know, YouTube network. And I was like, okay, let's join our YouTube network and let's let's really push this thing hard. And they did. The YouTube network jumped in and pushed super hard. And we ended up getting, you know, a cut like uh, I think it was about 1.2 million views on all of the first 15, 20 episodes of the of the show. And so wow. they have Steve who he thinks that we're hitting record and seven people are watching the show and that's it. He goes, yeah. So how many views do we have right now? And I was like, I don't know, uh, four million. And he's like, No. And I was like, Well, yeah, four million, but that's just from YouTube. And he goes, Oh, well, what about what about um, what about like the audio stuff? And I was like, I don't know, a couple million there as well. And he's just like, Are you kidding me? Like, how do we have this many? Who? Why are people watching this crap? Like, we put this stuff out here every week, but why are people watching this? And I'm like, Why? <laughs> Because they don't have a water cooler either. No, 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 no. It's I, and and I, I know my wife right now is in bed rolling her eyes because I'm going to say it again. The average person watches a YouTube video for between thirty and sixty seconds. Let's just say, the average person watches a teacher cast video for between nine and thirteen minutes. And huh. I structure myself every minute and a half, something different changes. Hmm. Whether I do a 20 minute show, an hour show, or whatever, something always changes. We do an intro, we do a demo, we do a this, we do a that. With your show, you know it's a half an hour. And you know that every 15 seconds, a brand, like you're going to make a left turn at every 15 seconds because someone's going to yeah. jump in with, Here's a plug in or here's a story or wait, Chris is going to talk for a while. Yep. And, and, and I love that because you have to be on. I, I know I like listening to it in the morning rather than when I'm driving from work because when I'm driving home from work, I don't I, I can't deal with the energy. But in the morning, <laughs> it gets me going. Right. And, and so that's that's, I think, part of the success. Like I know it's a half an hour and every like. I don't care who you are. We all have one thing in common. We transport ourselves to work. Yeah. The average, the average time to get to work is like 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you know you're going to get there. And yeah. it, 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 the format is, is there. I mean, I'm looking at everything that I do with my shows going, all right, I know that after 13 and a half minutes, I've lost X number of people statistically. Right. 
after 25 minutes statistically. And mm-hmm. so I, I'm not going to you know deny this. Once I get past the 25 minute mark on my live shows, I, I get loopy. I get a little silly. <laughs> I, I, I purposely turn on the dry humor because I'm trying to get people to go. And if anybody out there's ever watched my show knows I have a guy who's my co-host that does puppetry. And there'll be times where at, you know, you look at the clock, 25 minutes. I'm now looking for the puppet to join us on, on the show. I and hope. I'm, I'm now having, clock here. His name is Waka Patui. He has his own Twitter handle. But he, <laughs> but I won't do that in the first 15 minutes because I'm, everyone's watching i don't want right. i don't want you to come on the show and go ah oh, the freaking puppet guy again <laughs> i want you to get past that halfway point and, yeah this show's a little long for me <laughs> but being but being a half an hour show is the perfect yeah time. yeah and i know it's not 20 it's not 31 minutes it's right. we're on right so yeah. i so like when when you have a guest come on what do you send out to people? Do you have a form letter? Do you have a, 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 a you know text expander that you just pop everything in? Do you say I need you to have a microphone or or don't bother coming on? Yeah. What what do you do with your guests? Yeah. So what we do is um, is every week, uh, typically on Sunday, which is if I if I ever did this again, I would be doing the I would have like a week ahead of of stuff kind of planned out and everything. I don't plan anything. Everything happens like on a Sunday, and it's the worst because I work at a church, so you have that to deal with. But <laughs> with, what ends up happening is you know on Sunday I I hit up Chris and Steve and I say, okay, what do you guys want to talk about? I get their first impressions of it. Then I go send it to the rest of the the crew and I say, what's your, what, what do you guys think of this? Or maybe come up here with your own thing. And then after that, I send out an email to all of our subscribers that are the ones that want to be on the show. And I say, Hey, here's what's going on. Make sure you click on this link to uh, learn more about the show and how you can get involved in it. And we kind of have our rules of the land kind of thing where it's like, Please make sure your your Ethernet cord's plugged into your laptop. We don't want you on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi sucks. Um, if you live in an apartment, it's the worst thing ever because all the packets are being shared in the air and yeah. you know all of that don't stuff. Turn on your microwave. If you have you know this thing that came with you know it's a twenty nine dollar headphones, use that. It's better than hearing the fan on your laptop. So make sure you have that. If you're on a Windows computer, go buy a Mac because that would be that would be great. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but you have those types of things. So it's like we we lay out all the stuff, and <laughs> and then when we're done, um, you know, I send out an email saying, you know, please click here to RSVP, and we have uh, ten slots that are available. I fill up all the slots with all of our regulars, whether they can show up or not, and then everyone else signs up, and we go from there. So yeah, there's there's a it, it's all manual labor the entire thing. I, I I have I do have a tech expander that I use to kind of uh, spit out here's the time in which it's happening. You know, figures out if it's uh, if it's uh, daylight savings time or not. It spits out a couple other links. I have all those types of things built into that. But yeah, it just kind of takes care of all of that for me. So yeah. And with everything post that, you put your stuff out on YouTube Hangouts, you put your stuff out on iTunes, of course. Yep. Is that just by downloading the audio, and or do you spend time editing things at all? Or how, what's, Yeah, what's no editing whatsoever. So what I do is um, uh, I live and breathe from scripts. So I write scripts all day long at work, and so I just use, this, use those types of you know scripts to do this. So I have a script that goes and downloads um, the uh, video file from YouTube. It converts it to an MP3 file. It takes that MP3 file and uploads it to SoundCloud. And that all happens all, all, all automatically. I don't have to do anything. It opens up a web browser. It opens it up to that SoundCloud URL that it just uploaded it to. It puts the cursor right there where it says typing the, uh, the title. The title's already typed in because it pulled it from YouTube. It puts a description in automatically, so I don't have to do any of that. Um, before all that, it takes care of all the ID3 tags for the MP3 file. So ID3, for people that don't know, it's kind of like the metadata that's built into the MP3 file. So, you know, who's on the show, what the album art is, all that fun stuff. So yeah, I wrote all these scripts that kind of do all of this, a bunch of API calls and what have you. 
And then when I'm done, um, it uh, opens up a it opens up the the blog post from the site, and it says, "Okay, go edit this blog post." And I put in a few, you know, the URL to the MP3 file, and uh, I update some of the text, and all that stuff's all text expander type stuff. And then I hit the save button, and we're done. Wow, uh, that's impressive. You yeah, are so all nine thousand. Yeah, so that entire that entire process used to take about ooh, about three hours to do, and it was just like I wrote down with a piece of paper and a pencil. I wrote down all my steps, and then I go, okay, what can I automate? And I automated from top to bottom the entire thing, so I don't have to do anything. It just says, okay, YouTube, go download the file, shoot it over to SoundCloud, and go. So it's pretty nifty. I mean, I could write the rest of it where I could have it talk to the uh, XML RPC on, on on WordPress and make the post for me and do all yeah, that you stuff. Make but... that as a plugin. Heck no, man. This is this is this is mine. Secret sauce. <laughs> it's my secret sauce. <laughs> well, okay. Let me piggyback on 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 what you just said there, Bridget. I I don't have time to do this but I'm looking for a developer to do this simple function for education. And let's, let's yeah. bring this back into teachers. Can you podcast for free? Can you do WordPress? <laughs> let's start with that again. I want to have a teacher yep. who doesn't know anything. And when I say let's uh, podcast equals, here's my, here's my class trip, right? I want them to be able to put a audio file in Google Drive. Yeah, it could be a video, could be an audio, it could be right from their camera using the dr- whatever. I need a Google plugin, an add-on, a Chrome ext- whatever, whatever the vehicle is. Mm-hmm. I need that video file in Google Drive to automatically get onto iTunes. So how do I do that? Where I can have a Google form, I yeah. fill out all the IDE and all that stuff, and somehow through Sheets it automatically starts spitting out something that iTunes can read. Like, how do I make it? Sp- if yeah. somebody can do that for me, right? Well, like that, that would help out so many teachers. So I have something that gets you close. <laughs> so there's, there's a company um, called Auphonic, A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C. Okay. And what Auphonic does is it's kind of like the if this, then that for audio. Got it. So if this and that, ifttt.com is this thing where you have something on the left-hand side that's going to in- ultimately talk to the thing on the right-hand side, and all of the data is going to transfer from the left to the right, and it just happens. Alphonic used to be free. It's now a paid product. I think they have a free level or maybe pretty close to it. I think it's like two hours. Yeah, two hours of audio processing a month. But what's interesting about this thing is, as you can see, it says it does audio processing. So you could actually take your phone and record. You can even download their app and use it. Record using this. Then take the, it'll take that file and process it, upload it to the, you know, wherever it is that you have your, po- your podcast host to that, and do all the stuff for you, and it just happens automatically. It's magic. It's magic. I will definitely check this out. Yeah, I, I, I wanted I, to add this to my workflow, but the problem is, is that, um, you know, I hate to say this here, but crap in, crap out. So if you if you record, you know, horrible audio, which that's what Blab's going to do, it's going to spit out horrible audio. Um, that audio, which is all compressed in MP3 file and all that fun stuff, is going to sound awful when you try to process it again because you now you're doing a second generation of audio encoding on top of it so we've already you know the, the, us being on here right now is encoding the audio sending it to blab then blab's processing it and smashing all of the audio together from the three of us and then it's going to take that and spit out an mp3 file so at this point it's like multiple generations of of yuck so if you can come up with a way of getting essentially like a double ender where you could take the, your, your audio files, throw it into Google Drive, this thing, if I remember correctly, will tap into Google Drive and pull that audio out of it and do something with it. So, uh, with, with so many schools being yeah. Google Apps schools, that's why I'm looking at doing it through forms. Yeah. 
and 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 this is for the principal who just wants to do a daily announcement or Mm -hmm. you know get the get the choir concert on or something and and i know you're going to say there is a solution for this it's called spreaker you can do it live automatically it it, and and maybe i should just get a like spreaker is the answer but (laughs) Being a Google certified trainer, I'm looking for a way to use Google apps into podcasting. And I'm hoping that now Google has podcasting stuff they'll get into. <laughs> well, you know, look, I can host my photos up there and you've got, you're getting right. unlimited storage on my audio. And for yeah. nine bucks a month, I can get like a hundred gazillion of bytes. Like, why not get into taking over what Lipson currently has and Blueberry has? Not that I'm suggesting it, but but think about the Think about the teachers, Jason. <laughs> True. The other, the other one that we've talked about in the past is Mixler, M-I-X-L-R, which is like an a online mixing board type setup where you can do uh, – it'll do the double-ending stuff for you and do all that stuff. So, yeah, there is that one as well. So, yeah, there's there's plenty of options here. It's just like what's the one that – just like you were saying, Jeff, like what's the one that you can throw in the metadata into a sheet hit the save button and it just spits everything out. And I know you could do that stuff because all these things can talk to each other. So you could definitely write a script that ties into sheets that goes and says, grab this file from Google drive and do something with it. But what's the something and where's that piece? You know, and, and I don't even, and I've said it a couple of, I don't need iTunes, right? Like, I don't need clean, explicit. I don't need categories. I need grandma to get an email. Right. Like that that's all I need is you know or I need to be able to from my my principal desk I need to say here's the lunch menu and then suddenly boom every teacher gets a text message with a link and there's the audio or yeah. something and, and again maybe the answer is speaker I don't know yeah. Yeah, Lots of good know. stuff in there though but it's it's interesting I mean you said that you started um podcasting in October of two is it water cooler was like was just October water 12? cooler yeah You've been podcasting for how long? Oh my gosh. I want to say it's uh, thir- 12, 12 years? 12 wow. years. 12, 13 years, somewhere around in there. Wow. Okay. So you, you, you've you seen a lot of adjustments and a lot of changes on here. Let's get yeah. back to can you do this for free or <laughs> close to it? What are you, what, what is in front of you right now? What are you, what's, what's your microphone? What's your, your setup looking like, and I'm not saying like I have a Mac Pro or I have a laptop. Like, get that aside. Right. What are you currently using that you had to pay for or that you're taking advantage of free stuff for to make the podcast? Yeah. So, um, here's the microphone I'm not using. <laughs> <laughs> this is a um, a Marshall MXL 990, and then this is the Marshall MXL Mic Mate. That puts out a um, a uh, uh, USB connection on it, so it's XLR on the top and USB on the bottom. Um, that's why I used to use. My problem is, is I live with neighbors and dogs, and that thing um, has like the hearing of a dog, so it picks up like every little thing that happens in the whole place. So I use these really wonderful twenty nine dollar. I have like a whole bunch of these in my bag headphones. So I'm always with these headphones. Um, I have used this, oops, I have used this on occasion, which is like one of those gamer headsets. Um, it, the, the audio quality is pretty horrible on them, but I have that. Uh, Bridget uses uh, a pretty great um, headphones. So I like she, Sennheiser products because I'm a musician. So I've splurged for this $300 one for like 120 something. But the this bugs me. Like, <laughs> it being on my ear, I was talking to Jesse Peterson. He goes, it should be over your ear. But I'm like, my ears are so small with the earrings. Like, these are girl problems, right? Like, I don't know how people do it with plugs and stuff. But, like, you know, and it was too long. So I had to use scotch tape to make my microphone part go closer to where my actual voice boxes right and i'm still not totally happy with the sound but it's better than you know what i had i was using like a jawbone so what's uh we're gonna go we're gonna go a little live here we're gonna take out the studio cam so here's what i'm using at home for 
you know, for there's my there's my laptop. <laughs> there's uh, there's you guys, and then I have these studio lights that are over here that not really studio lights, but they're just like these that's made by a company called Ot Light. So if you're a crafter, um, these are like those really expensive crafting lights. Um, I stole both of them from my wife. So that works out pretty good. And then I have uh, lighting up here that takes care of my all of my lights and stuff. So between these three, oh, and I have a light over here that kind of it's it's an incandescent, but it 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 works. So between all these lights, that's kind of what makes this happen. Uh, I don't know if it's good or bad, but pretty good. Ah, okay, there we go. So yeah, so and then my microphone I'm using, or the sorry, the uh, the the camera I'm using is a Logitech C90, if I remember right. 920? 920, yeah. So I, I use that guy. I used to use the I used to use the microphone on it because it's actually a pretty decent microphone. Um, my problem is is that I'm so close to the wall that it just starts bouncing. Yeah. Um, that wall that was behind my monitor, I'm going to be putting up um, some uh, noise dampening stuff up there on the walls. You can buy that oh, over yeah. at like good um, uh, over at like one of the guitar shops or what have you. I also use a Logitech camera, but um, for because I have a Mac Mini here, the house computer is a Mac Mini, so there's no like eyesight. But the I had the same problem with the with the actual sound; it picked up too much. It picks up the TV in the other room. Yeah, so that's, that's my problem with that that really nice condenser microphone. Yeah, is it 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 just goes crazy. To answer your other question regarding when did I start doing podcasts? So I started back in 2004. Um, that's when I that's when I started. And back then, um, there was only so many podcasts. So I actually won a podcast award. Aww. It's the Podcast Peers Award for my show that I used to podcast. do called Geek Fit. Wow. So we did a fitness podcast, and that was back in 2008 that I won wow. that award. Yep. That's pretty cool. Dang. I didn't know it's like with podcast royalty. I mean, I knew you were kind of a big deal, but. <laughs> so then I'll ask you the other question. Um, you've been podcasting for 12 years. Does that mean that you are on WordPress version one? Um, let's see here. Uh, if I remember right, I started out with movable type. That was my first, my first uh, content management system. Um, before that, I was using... Uh, some PHP templating system called Smarty Templates. Um, so yeah, I kind of worked my way towards that. So I think I used maybe it was like 1.1, 1 1.2. 1, 1 uh, I know that there was that split that they did way back in the day. And I, I used the old system. I don't remember off the top of my head. But um, yeah, I've kind of played around with a bunch of them. But my one that I started out with was that... Um, that horrible movable type. <laughs> a couple of questions here. By the way, we're doing 20 questions with Jason Tucker. Um, why WordPress? Why not Drupal, Joomla, or you insert other... Uh, why do you CMS? say these bad words on my show, dude? Because <laughs> if you're only going to get asked onto the show once, why not? Come back. We don't have a policy of time. So, um, why WordPress? Um... You know, it's a whole, it's, it's kind of corny, but slowly but surely became the community, but it wasn't the community at first. Oh. At first it was just like, dude, this thing's free and it's not Mambo, which is what I used for my first wedding website was Mambo, which I remember correctly. I think that came in, turned into Joomla. If I remember right, it might've been Drupal. Either way, the thing sucked and it was, it, it drove me crazy. And so I was really excited to to use something that works and works really well. And so, yeah, that's why I started using WordPress. And uh, it's hackable, and I love hacking stuff, so it's it's fun. That is so funny. I didn't know that. Would you ever try your hand at working on WordPress core? Or is that not where you are developmental-wise or all those things? Yeah, no, not so much. Um, I have done some stuff. Um, I started working on a documentation project for WordPress. Um, it was like two, it was, it was like three WordCamp San Francisco's ago. Um, I sat down and was working uh, 
on some documentation projects and it, it worked out pretty well. I got to do a few little things, but it wasn't enough to where I got mentioned in any of the, uh, the end credits, if you will. So uh, keep going with the 20 questions theme. I, I want to piggyback on something. I believe it was a Chris Lemma blog or a Chris Lemma speech. Can you define the term professional WordPresser? Oh, or WordPress boy. user or WordPress. Yeah. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about on that one, right? Like, yeah. Um, how do I define that? Well, it's that came from the chat. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if it, it's somebody who, somebody who spends more time, spends time learning about WordPress itself versus just like, how do I get my words to show up onto the, onto the internet? So I think really learning, reading the documentation, figuring it out, not being afraid to break it. I think at that point, that's, I don't know if you're professional at that point, but you're professional, you're proficient. Um, I think what you're professional, it's when you, um, when you build a website for somebody else, even if you didn't charge anybody for it, but it was good enough that you could give to somebody else. So if I do a site for my local township and they give me 10 bucks, am I a professional WordPress developer? And I can now go out and say, or you're starting you're starting to yeah you're starting to i don't think you're i don't think you're fully yeah yeah i mean there, it's not like there's like merit badges or anything you got to get in order to like become an eagle scout or anything but yeah there's definitely there's definitely something that you gotta hmm, are you know. a professional musician if you sing on the street corner Hmm. I think if people like you, the word sure. professional usually <laughs> means that's how you earn your living. Huh? Because if I mean, if you know, I wouldn't say I'm a professional musician. Right. I've written songs. I have a CD. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Apple Music. But I would never say I'm a professional musician because that's not my full time. That's 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 an interesting question. It actually took me a few years. Again, huh. I've got I've got my undergrads in music ed. My master's is in orchestral conducting. It <laughs> took me about five years of being a high school orchestra teacher to actually say to myself, "I guess I've made it as a professional musician." Yeah, like you I'm, have I'm, actual I'm, degrees. I'm, I'm, I'm making my living doing the subject of music. That's different. Right. Than I'm the basis for Aerosmith. Like that's a that's a professional musician also. Yep. But, same idea. You can you can make your living off of WordPress, but not be. I, good questions to ask. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as you know, with everything going on here, and and all the shows that you've done, all the shows that you do, here's the philosophical question: What do you hope people take away from your show, or shows, or? I hope what? they learn something. Uh, you know, the, what, what we always say on water cooler is water cooler, um, education is an accidental byproduct of the show. <laughs> that's a Chris Lima quote, but that's, that's what we say. That's, he said it and we've said it ever since. So if you learn something, it was totally on accident. We hope you do, but it's totally on accident. And so that way, you know, no one's going to sue us because no one learned anything and we wasted their time or anything like that. But it's totally an accidental byproduct of, of the show. So um, it's 12.15 my time here. And, yep. and, I, and I, I, I end my shows with something called the Jersey Five. Can I ask both of you guys the questions for the Jersey Five? Sure. They're not easy. And I'm going to I'm going to take the way I do it for educators and I'm going to turn it into podcasting WordPress questions here. But but we'll 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 do Bridget first <laughs> and then we'll do Jason. So awesome. that way we have a chance here. But uh, Bridget, your favorite Twitter address or hashtag to follow. Oh, of another person, you mean? Yes. Gary V. Why? Uh. If, if for the same reason you learn so much from him, he's been one of my like mentors. I mean, he he's rated F for F bombs, uh, but he's right. Nice. It's one of my favorite yeah. guys. Jason, favorite Twitter address to follow or hashtag to follow? Hmm. Twitter address. Man, I don't know. Oh, let's see or here. Hashtag, that's, that's, or hashtag. Or hashtag. Um, 
I have a I have one that I do, which is the Church IT Roundtable. So it's C I R T. Uh, oh gosh, I'm messing it up. Church IT Roundtable is the the hashtag. Anyhow, that that's the one I always follow because that's the one that I'm really involved in the most. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I have it saved. <laughs> All right, next one. I usually ask the, the the question favorite educational tool. And I was thinking about this the last couple of seconds here. I don't want to do the, the hack. Hey, Jason, what's your favorite plugin? But, <laughs> you know, let, let, let's just go. And again, let's let's keep this on a teacher level. But yeah. what's your favorite WordPress tool? And I'm not saying, you know, go get Sakuri or go get like, right. teacher level. What's your favorite WordPress tool? Hmm. Bridget, I'll start with you. Well, because really you don't need any tools to just use WordPress. Um, Google Analytics is a tool. But that's not a WordPress I, 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 tool. That's not a WordPress specific tool. It, it, however, <laughs> however you define it. Uh, She's about to overanalyze I'm, it, I'm my over, friend. I'm sorry. I'm over. I'm. I am overanalyzing it. But I think. Okay, so I'm gonna steal Ira's answer. Yes, desktop server. <laughs> because I love them the best. That's the reason why I try Be built my site in the first place. I never would have had the courage to try. If somebody said, Bridget. I want to give you a million dollar grant to work with inner city kids in Santa Ana. Um, I'm going to give you 10 computers. What would you do? I'd be like, I'm putting a desktop server on them. I'm teaching these kids. <laughs> be, be, because every teacher now is going to go out and want to get desktop, right? Ugh. No, I mean, totally I'm, that's on my heart already. Like, I think that, I think that if people realize their voice can be heard. They will rise above their difficulties in their life. I believe that with all my heart. Jason, teacher can leave the classroom, but they'll never stop. <laughs> so my my favorite, I have two, real quick. My favorite, like plugin, is called Admin Columns. I love that thing. It makes it so that your the columns on your um, in the dashboard for like um, editing posts and stuff or looking at lists of posts can totally be modified and you can move them around and change them and do whatever you want with it. But my favorite thing is the link that I put in here, which is the ability to look at people's favorite posts or favorite plugins on the WordPress repo. So if you just go to uh, the wordpress.org slash plugins, and go and uh, do a search for fa or click on favorites. You can type in the person's um, WordPress name, and it will find you all the favorites that they have. Mm -hmm. It's See, one I, of my favorite things. That is a cool got, tool. I don't know if I got this one off of Water Cooler or somewhere else, but I do. What WP theme is that? Oh yeah, that's a good one. And that doesn't tell you a lot sometimes, but at least it can give you a. a I I tell you a story before we end here about that site but but yeah okay so let's go to number three here um bridget best advice you have ever been given as a podcaster wordpress person fill in the blank on that one best advice you've ever been given as a wow that's a really hard one i'm sorry um <laughs> I've gotten a lot of advice, um, but for WordPress, <laughs> I would say invest in the community and they'll invest in you. And that's my advice. Okay, nice. My best advice is my own advice. <laughs> but my, <laughs> husband, my husband's grandfather said a fast nickel beats a slow dime. And that's my favorite advice from a regular person. <laughs> Jason, best advice you've ever been given as a... Um, as a, I guess it would be as a, like a WordPress developer is that, um, just keep doing what you're doing because at some point here, somebody's going to recognize it and then they're one, they're going to want to help you out in doing what you're doing. And that's kind of what water cooler is all about. That, that has been its, its thing. I just keep doing good stuff and then hopefully somebody will want to do good things with me and then we all get the benefit from it. Can somebody please take that as a quote and just isolate that audio right yeah. there? <laughs> Turn that, into 140 that, characters. That, that could be really dangerous on somebody's. Uh, <laughs> I just want somebody to do nice things with me. Okay. Yep. So number four here is, and I'm going to read this the way I, I pose it for teachers, but it's 
What do you hope your students remember about you when they graduate at the end of the year? So I want to change mm. that into what do you hope your audience remembers about you when they turn off your show? Or what do you hope your audience remembers about your website when they leave? Or, <laughs> however you want to change that into your own world, what do you hope you're remembered for after the stop button happens or something like that? Bridget. I would hope that they would know that they're not alone. Mic drop. <laughs> I, I have a heart for the isolated. So, and we've been, we've sort of become a virtual meetup for a lot of people that don't have meetups. Yeah. So yeah, it's totally true. true. Totally true. I completely with you, Jason. Um, I think people, I think people would really wish I would have edited, would have edited the show. (laughs) (laughs) I really wish he would have had like, you know, like, like isolated, isolated versions of each person's audio and that he would have taken the time to clean the whole thing up and really make it so that you can understand the person that's speaking and that no one else is speaking over them. Um, but unfortunately, no, that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of the, what, what makes water cooler interesting is just like you were saying earlier that you, you have to, you have to learn how, what the rhythm is. Embrace it's like double, chaos. it's like double, it's like double Dutch, but we all have like, you know, we all have our own uh, jump rope and we're all going like this and <laughs> somebody has to figure out how to jump in real quick. All right. Here, here's, here's, here's the easy one. <clears throat> What's the best teachable moment you've ever had for yourself or recognizing it in somebody else i'm gonna leave it at that what's the best teachable moment you've ever had oh my gosh there's so many Uh, last night we had our women who wp meet up and um just telling your story sometimes and you could see that's why I said you, a teacher can leave the classroom, but they never really leave teaching. When you see that person's face, get it? There's nothing better in the world. It happens to me all the time. So uh, because I'm, I'm like a sucker for analogies. So uh, once, I tell, once I could figure out how to explain it to that one person, I look for, that, I look for the, them questioning. I look for them... I'm looking for those moments. I'm constantly searching for them. My whole blog exists to teach social media. So, yeah, when I when somebody says to me, "Wow, you really impacted my life," and I could do X, Y, and Z, that's it. I could die now. That's what I live for. Beat that one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was it was being. <laughs> it was being forced to, to, um, or being asked to, and, and to blog, like take all these things in your head and actually put them onto virtual paper, put virtual pen on the virtual paper and, and really blog all the things that you can do. So for 30 days, um, Chris Lemma, myself, Suzette, Frank, a few other people, we all we all said fine, Chris. You give us the topic, and we'll we'll write about it. And he goes, no, 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 no. That's too easy. Like you need to know your own topics. You got to figure out your own stuff, and you just need to start writing. So what I do is I make all my blogs teachable moments. All my blog posts. And I said blogs. See that, Bridget? I said blogs, not articles. I'm telling or, or... Oscar um, Gonzalez. <laughs> so I I um. <laughs> I, I make all my blog posts into those things that I'm going to forget. So hopefully I'll do a Google search and my thing will show up and I'm like, man, this guy really knows what he's talking about. Oh, it's Jason Tucker's website. Huh? Who knew? I did know something <laughs> back then. So yeah. Um, WPmedia.pro is the site that I, I did that for a whole month. And then I kept slowly but surely adding more stuff to it. This has been a great two hours, by the way. Yeah. So for, much having for having us us. on your now, show. Now, now, can I go fanboy for a quick second before we before we sign off here? Sure. So, true story here. Um, like I said, Teacher Cast is going to be five years old. And uh, over the spring break we had about a month ago or so, I decided to completely revamp Teacher Cast. Literally, 
based off of listening to everything that's been going on at Water Cooler. And two years ago, um, I redesigned it. I was moving from self-hosted. It's not so, so you know, I was moving from shared server on GoDaddy over to Bluehost. I was making it up to a VPN. I was I was thinking I'm hot uh-huh. stuff. I was turning into, hey, I'm gonna be a WordPress guy and I'm gonna do this thing. And for whatever reason, on the previous version of TeacherCast, I had this bounce rate of about 85%. Ooh. I kid you not. But I was pumping out so much content, it didn't matter because the eyes were coming. And I didn't know very much. But literally over the last year, year and a half, I listened to the shows, did some homework, checked it out. We got to... Jason's going to start crying in five minutes. We, we, no, 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 no. no. This, this is okay. We, we get to learning about all of these different things. I decided, look, when I'm going to redesign TeacherCast, I'm actually going to do this the right way. I learned MAMP, so I downloaded Ooh. everything. On wow. I figured I'm going to do this and get it up. So I learned how to do local server. I put TeacherCast on. I picked a new theme. I'm sorry it was Theme Forest, but, <laughs> but I did it. And we was uploaded it. <laughs> no, no, no! It was actually the, the site's beautiful. It's got it, it's it's amazing. Um, but I I followed all the rules. I then went into SEO stuff. I searched through all the major teacher blogs that were people, and then I searched through all the major education company blogs because TeacherCast is kind of a hybrid. Although I want it to go for like a magazine type of thing, I looked at all their descriptions. I looked at their metadata. I looked at all their stuff. I then went to all the WordPress people. I literally searched through all of your websites, all of Steve's websites, Chris websites, Yoast websites, trying to figure out what does good SEO look like? What does good metadata, titles, descriptions? How are you writing your blog posts? All of this stuff. And I compiled a pretty cool database. of. I I figured who could I better learn SEO from than looking at the metadata inside of Yoast's website, right? Yeah. So I put all of this stuff together, and that's when I started to actually redesign TeacherCast from the ground up with the idea that how do we do this? My bounce rate is now 3%. Whoa! Nice! Are you going to make a white paper on this? the (laughs) The average day for downloading on TeacherCast before was about five to 800 shows a day now i'm downloading about 18 to 2400 a day nice good job i'm not saying this as a fanboy but i do (laughs) ask that you share this with the group your show has saved my family my life my business because teacher cast is now in a better place because of it and i do want to say thank you for that awesome that's so cool you guys so cool oh my gosh no, so you can, can learn a lot from Say Read. Right? What can I say? <laughs> you can learn a lot from Say Read. If you haven't gone to a meetup yet and have have had the honor of being in the room when she starts talking about stuff, mm-hmm. it's awesome. She's actually going to be on the show here. Or you can come to our show next week. And 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 on, look, <laughs> right? I'm saying this for anybody out there who's still listening after two year two two hours here. We love you. Su- Su- Number yes. two. <laughs> Suzette Frank is fantastic. She and I got to be pretty good friends last summertime because I was asking her, like, look, do I take the current theme and change it? And can you help me with it? And she she sat me down for a couple hours and she's like, look, I'll help you out. I'll do this. You need me to. I didn't get a chance to take her up on it because I just I had bigger ideas than let's just fix this. I wanted to do something mm. different. But she was there again. Syed, I had him on the show. Great guy. Easy to talk to. You've always been there whenever I needed something on 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 Twitter. Say has even been there, and and a couple times I did get a tweet back from Chris. So <laughs> people that are podcasting, people that are out there, I'm talking to you now, who's still driving. You know, just reach out to people and ask for help. We're yes. all here to help out at whatever level, yep. and if we don't know the answer, we will help you find it, or maybe we'll have a resource, or maybe our dog wants to help out. You never know. <laughs> so that's the advice that I give to teachers. Reach out to people and just say wow. hello. You never know what can come back to you. It just might be a life-changing experience. Wow. Yep. 
Awesome. And, well, and I always end my shows by saying this. Until next time, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions on your podcasts. Sweet. I don't have anything to say on the on the end of our show. You say, yeah, you say, we do. You, you say, need a plug in, done. maybe Stop. a dev, or solving all your work by smooth a WP blast. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> That's what we say. Are you still with me out there? That was an amazing two hours. Again, I want to thank Jason Tucker and everybody on the WP Water Cooler and WP Blab shows for uh, letting us be a part of the adventure. It was really, really nice. Check them out over at WP Water Cooler and at WP Blab. I'll, of course, have all the links in the show notes. Um, one more time, thank you to Jason. And ho- thank you guys out there for checking out the show and uh, supporting us. We have another show coming up very, very soon. I did an in- a uh, recent podcast with a music teacher um, and he has a expertise in paranormal activities. And so we talked a little bit about ghosts and spooky stuff. And I'm looking forward to uh, check that out. That's going to be our next episode, episode 20. We're going to be having that one out. So, uh, wow, this is two, minute, two, two hours and nine minutes. This is absolutely in five years our longest podcast. Thank you guys so much. You can, of course, check us out on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave me a voicemail over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. And, of course, we love it when you subscribe to our shows over on iTunes and on YouTube. And if you're there, give us a five-star rating. Leave us a review. Uh, It's been a while since we've gotten a few of those, so check out that stuff and say thank you so much. Um, Until next time, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions on your podcasts.